Hey guys, what's going on? Just want to show y'all what I've been up to lately. Actually, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I actually been going out of town a lot of racetracks, or uh, not a lot of racetracks, but up to uh, Idaho with some friends racing lately, and been out in the garage a little bit. But it's been too hot to record, and now I'm starting to record, and uh, you might hear some fireworks in the background because it's um, I don't even know what the date is. I think the sixth. I don't even know, but whatever, we'll deal with it. I want to show you some new equipment I picked up. So check this out. Pick me up a Sun Sleuth One engine analyzer. This is a pretty sweet little unit. Uh, I haven't even cleaned it up yet. Uh, I cleaned the screen so I could see it. It's covered, covered in dust. It's been sitting around for a little bit. Uh, a good friend of mine had this thing sitting in the garage. It was in his way. Uh, along with some other stuff, which I'll show you in just a second. So I hooked it up to my homemade distributor machine to test it out. I'll show you what I found real quick in just uh, a few minutes, but I want to show you what else I got. So right here, I have my Sun 680 machine that I picked up. Uh, What's the distributor tester? Picked this up a couple years ago and haven't made much progress with this thing. It needs a lot of work. I tried playing with it, and I do know where to get parts and all the stuff. I just haven't got around to it. And I uh, just barely picked up a Sun 404 distributor machine. This is from the same guy that has the engine Sleuth 1 engine analyzer. Again, this is kind of in the way. He needed the space, and I was glad to take it off his hands. I very much appreciate it. He knows who he is. Uh, this thing actually works. It spins. Uh, I was going to clean it up a little bit and uh, plug in a distributor. I just haven't, quite honestly, haven't got that far. Uh, but anyway, let me show you what this bad boy does. It's, it's pretty slick. Uh, matter of fact, we'll look at two, two coils real quick. And uh, I'm not going to go into detail about the lines and stuff. But I just want to show you that it works. It's pretty cool. So right now I've got the MSD 7AL system hooked up and uh, this Crane LX92 coil. And I know this coil is a bad boy. It, it spits out some fire, let me tell you. It spits out some serious fire. Um, but let me fire this thing up here and I'll show you the machine. Turn that on. And you've already seen that thing spark and stuff. So I fired up and run about 2,500 RPM. So you'll see the RPM here. And this is the dwell right here, which is going to be fixed because there's no module or anything in the distributor. It's firing off the magnetic pickup. Then right here, you're going to see a wave. This is only hooked up to the number one spark plug wire. So that's all you're going to see. So let's check this out. Wow, I hit almost right on 2500. That's kind of cool. First time I did that. Uh, my shop lights turned away, but check that out. That's kind of cool. Get a little bit closer there. And it's got different scales. You know, obviously power, scale, low, high. Uh, the pattern, you got your primary, secondary, and alternate. So primary. Secondary, alternate, I think that's what that means, I'm not sure. Uh, mode, raster, I'm not sure what, what this is, but it does that. And that's a combination of both. The shop light's kind of glaring, but... Um, you see the RPM right here. I can change that to uh, volts. That doesn't really matter. DC volts. I don't have anything hooked up. Ohms. Uh, power balance. Dwell degrees. Now I'm messing everything up. Let's go back to RPM. Oh. And let's go back to dwell. Uh, dwell percent. Yeah, pull the wells, just pick up. So yeah, these buttons actually work and stuff. It's kind of cool. There's that, and uh, I'm gonna swap this coil over. Oh, let me turn this thing down. 
I'm gonna swap this coil over and uh, just so y'all can get a quick glimpse on the difference here. Uh, hang on one second because I need two hands. I'll be right back. And just like that, I got it hooked up. So I've got these hooked up with uh, a male and female ants. I can just quickly swap those over. Just swap the coil over. So this is the old school ProMaster 29440. Uh, I've had this coil sitting around since I'm pretty sure the mid 80s uh, But the funny thing is you'll see a difference in the uh, Reading right here and pump this back up to uh, the 2500 Pretty close look at the difference right there now that's freaking crazy. I haven't changed any of these buttons. I left everything on the same scales that they were. It's all the same. We go back to the primary, secondary. So it's been many years since I've even seen one of these run. I'm not clear on how to interpret these. I have a friend of mine that does this kind of stuff for 11 so let me crank this thing back down so i have him come over and give me another quick tutorial on that but you can see a clear difference in those two coils on this graph right here so i know which one is more powerful uh i'm seeing a difference here and again i don't know how to interpret it and what to tell you but so yeah that's kind of what i've been playing with this new stuff here um Something else that happened, uh, one of my favorite time of lights, this unit right here, this has been a really good light. It's got a xenon bulb in it. Well, the bulb took a dump oh, a week or two ago. It just blew out. I Don't even ask me. I guess uh, it is pretty old. The thing I liked about this time of light is there's no buttons to push. Once you plug it in and hook it up to wire, it's, it's going right now. Then with your thumb, you can adjust the, uh, you can turn the advance up and down so you can see where your time is. But it's real simple. Turn it with the thumb, no, no buttons to push, it's ready to go. That's a great light. And this feels like it's aluminum. I think it's hard plastic, but that's a pretty cool light. Well, again, took a dump. So I got a new light. Yeah, that's about the best we could do. Uh, this handle is... A lot bigger and it's really slippery I'm gonna have to do something about that and this one I have to push this button for it to go which means I can't use my thumb to turn this but this knob is really stiff so this light is gonna take some getting used to because a lot of times you're, it's one-handed operation because you're usually doing something with the other hand you idle or whatever so I guess this will be a two-handed light for a minute I need to go in here see if I can force this button to stay pushed all the time i don't even know but it's pretty slippery it it works really well it's pretty cool but yeah there's that but anyway i just want to make a quick little video to show you all some of my student new stuff i got i'm pretty excited about it and uh, i say when i get my friend over here to help me interpret these uh signals we're seeing uh we're going to test some more coils now this machine doesn't have the HEI, there's a, a little, um, almost like a plastic, or a, a plastic thing that sits across this right here. I've seen them before. This one doesn't have it, so I don't know if I can test the end cap coils, but we'll try. But I got some other coils to test. Uh, this is a really weak coils MSD blaster, so we'll test that. That one I know is blown out. Um, and I got this coil here with my other ignition system. I got a Holly Annihilator ignition system. So there's a coil right there. We can try that. This thing spits out some fire too, let me tell you. I think this is the baddest coil here. This is the next one. And this is one of the weakest coils. So that's kind of what I think. But we'll let the machine tell us for sure. So anyway, that's what I got. That's what I've been playing with. I tried this old high fire here and it simply won't work. It's junk. So, I don't know, maybe I can experiment and try to fix that. But yeah, that's kind of cool. I got these things right here I want to play with. And like I say, this one actually works. Um, 
somewhat. It's, it's not perfect, but it, it spins. And uh, we'll play with that on video one day, too. So that's all I got for you. Uh, when I can find some more time to get back out here, I'll video. Uh, like I said, I've been at the racetrack a lot, and it's really hard to video while I'm there because I'm, I'm helping people do stuff, and I don't have a cameraman that follows me around. I'm not that important. Uh, anyway, uh, this kind of cool stuff. Just want to let y'all know what I'm doing, and uh, I'll be back at you. Thanks for watching.